coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The center last fortnight lifted the Armed Forces Special Powers Act from large parts of Nagaland, Manipur and Assam with Union Home Minister Amit Shah saying it was possible because the security situation in these areas have hugely improved. But a chorus demanding total withdrawal of APSPA from the whole of Nagaland has already started reverberating across the hill state. Now, this bears significance because the peace talks between the Naga insurgent groups and the government of India are already at an advanced stage with both sides having succeeded in narrowing their differences over the years. So far, it is only the civil society groups like the Naga Mothers Association and others who are demanding a total withdrawal of APSPA from Nagaland. The big question is, will the negotiating Naga rebel groups also decide to push this demand and link it up to the process of negotiations? Many would argue that the issue of APSPA should not be linked to the peace process for the simple reason that once peace is restored in a state or an area, such stringent laws like APSPA would lose its relevance and will not be required. Those who argue on this line are of the view that the armed forces have an entirely different role in reality, that of protecting our country's international borders, and if they are deployed for internal security duties, it is only because the situation demands their presence. Well, to discuss this sensitive subject, in Kohima, I have Naga Hoho advisor Chuba Uzukum. Joining me again from Kohima is Naga Tribes Council leader Teza Terry, and I am also joined by Dr. Visya Sanyu, president of the Overseas Naga Association and a well-known historian. In Dimapur, I have Mr. Kahuto Chisi Sumi, hereditary Sumi village chief and convener of the concerned people of Nagaland. And from Shillong, I am being joined by Dr. Javier Mao, professor at the Northeastern Hill University and a well-known commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to North East tonight. First of all, I'd like to go straight to you, Dr. Visya Sanyu, the president of the Overseas Naga Association and a well-known historian. Dr. Sanyu, is it not a good step? Is it not a good beginning? that the Armed Forces Special Powers Act have been lifted from large parts of Nagaland? Well, can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. Well, uh, was here. the ASPA thing is a very what complex you? issue. Okay, we have an audio issue. We have we have, we have lost that line. We have lost we have lost that line with Dr. Vizia Sanyu. We have lost that line with Vizia Sanyu. We'll connect. We'll connect once again. Uh, my question, the same question goes to Mr. Chuba Uzukum. Mr. Chuba Uzukum, let's have Chuba Uzukum on the screen. Mr. Chuba Uzukum, uh, you know, is it not a good thing? Is it not a good beginning that the Armed Forces Special Powers Act? has been lifted from large part of Nagaland to start with. Uh, yeah, what's clear, uh, thank you once again for uh, inviting me. Um, what I would like to see is uh, <clears throat> Armed Forces Special uh, Powers Act. Let's increase the volume. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay, uh, what I would like to see is uh, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act doesn't clearly uh, define to whom the are to be used. It only gives uh, unprecedented power to the security forces without any uh, accountability and the court of law. Civilians probably suspend the maximum victims of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. And uh, the, the, that's how uh, it has become uh, imperative to leave the Armed Forces Special Powers Act uh, <coughs> uh, from the entire uh, Naga areas and the Nordis as well. Yeah. Uh, the partial uh, lifting of ASPA from our Naga areas, or for that matter, even in the Nordis, uh, will not uh, give any impact uh, due to the ongoing uh, peace process. Okay, okay. Let me let me take that question once again to Dr. Visya Sanyu. Dr. Vijay Sanyu, my first question, I want to get a sense from you. Now, uh, you know, the government of India withdrew AFSPA from large parts of Nagaland and immediately all the civil society groups have demanded that it should be repealed totally. Uh, now, what is the link between the AFSPA and the ongoing peace process? Because the ongoing peace process has been going on for the last 27, 28 years and the AFSPA has also been there for that long. So, how do you react? What is your view? Well, regardless of the, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yes. Regardless of the relationship between the peace talk and the ASPA, ASPA must be forever repealed. Partial lifting is an insult to us. If you understand ASPA from a bro broader aspect, I'm hearing only myself anyway. <laughs> um, it is doing more harm to India than to the Nagas. It is not worthy of India. It has been going on for 60 years. It is a draconian law which was uh, introduced by the British to suppress the freedom movement. And now India is using against India, against Nagas. Now, to put it bluntly, this is a license to kill. So it definitely will affect the framework agreement, a peace talk, whether it has been going off for 20 years without it or not. The ASPA is making the Nagas and other Northeasterners unhappy, angry, in fact. Therefore, it must be lifted. It must be repealed. Okay. Now, I, yeah, okay. I am coming back to you, Dr. Fizia Senyu. Let me take the opening remarks from Mr. Kahuto Sichi Sumi, hereditary Sumi village chief, convener, concerned people of Nagaland, and then commentator. Mr. Sumi, uh, you know, now, now, you see, we have been having the peace talks since 1997. We have reached an advanced stage now. And the Armed Forces Special Powers Act have been there for the last six, seven decades. Now, the point is, Linking up the two, is it justified linking up the AFSPA issue with the peace accord, the peace process? Because a lot of people are arguing that once a peace accord is signed, the AFSPA has to go, go away automatically. <coughs> uh, 
uh, first let me mention, I am not getting your video link. Audio to is clear, but I have got no video link. Uh, regarding the AFSPA, I, I have written uh, an article which was published in the Moron Express. And there I mentioned the importance of context. Now, AFSPA, in the context of any modern democratic nation, is a very bad law, it's draconian, but in Nagaland, it is very necessary. The problem is that the army is not using it. I asked my thing, esteemed panelists to give me an instance when the army has used the AFSPA proactively within the last few years. Leaving aside the 1950s and 60s, the army has used the AFSA only when it has committed mistakes. The ordinary Naga citizen has nothing to do with AFSA. We are not affected by it. In fact, 90% of Nagas are unaware of this. So, and then since the talks have been going on, AFSA was there all along. Why suddenly they bring up this issue? My take on this is that the IM has realized that the people of Nagaland are not willing to accept any solution brought by them. So it is in their interest to keep raising issues to prolong the peace process. The flag and constitution was never mentioned before, but suddenly after our, our previous governor, Mr. Ravi, gave the deadline, then they brought up the thing, mm, flag and constitution. And now suddenly this officer, they got a very good opportunity uh, from the army's mistake at voting. So I don't see how this has become such a, such a big issue. Right. Uh, Mr. Sumi, I'll come back to you. I'm, I'll go to Mr. Teza Terry in a minute, but very quickly, Chuba Ozukum, uh, Mr. Kahuto Sumi is making a point that how do you link up the issue because APSPA was still in existence always. Alpha has always been in existence, six decades, seven decades, but the talks have been going on for more than 25 years, almost three decades now. So why do you link up the two? You see, uh, Waspir, if I were uh, one of the uh, leaders of the Nava National uh, Groups, before the signing of ceasefire with the government of India, I would have demand from the government of India to review the Armed Forces Special Powers Act first. After that only, I will uh, sign the agreement, the uh, ceasefire agreement. So, that, is, that will be a new condition? Because that is That will be a new precondition then? You know, that's why. Because of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, you know, uh, ever since 1958, how many innocent Nagas were tortured. I vividly remember even during my childhood days, my parents, even myself, I've gone through a lot of uh, uh, army atrocities, even in my family. It is only because of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act that the security forces have uh, misused the power. That is why uh, this is one very important aspect. When there is ceasefire between the Naga National Workers and the security forces, that is government of India, how can the security forces you know, uh, raid the houses of uh, uh, political groups? Even the innocent public, they have been uh, uh, telling, uh, many were killed by the security forces, even right. after the signing of the ceasefire. Okay. Why... Okay. Okay. Uh, now, turning to you, uh, Mr. Teza Theri, uh, you know, 
Now, if you say that APSPA first, first APSPA should be repealed and only then the signature will be done on the possible Naga Peace Accord, don't you think that will be a new precondition now because Alpha, uh, APSPA was already in existence when the talks started. Nobody was talking. Yes, there was on and off. Everybody has been demanding repeal of the APSPA. Even the government has been demanding repeal of the APSPA. That is one side. But negotiations has been going on full, full steam. And now if the APSPA issue, do you think that is going to overshadow the peace process? Do you think, do you see that possibility coming now? Thank you, Mr. Wasbin, for inviting me in again. You're welcome. <clears throat> Nagas are passing through a stage where we fail to prioritize. We fail to see the difference between black and white, and we are in the gray area. We are going through a stage where we are experiencing a mutual admiration in the word of Henry David. Everyone appreciate every other person, but uh, things are not moving ahead. And the irony at this stage is the civil bodies, the tribal hohos cannot come together and have a joint sitting until such time the government of Nagaland invite. Only under the patronage of the government of Nagaland, meetings are happening. And at the moment, government of Nagaland is also trying to project itself that it is the official representative of the people. I think this is a time where we pick up any issue and then we divert our attention, our focus. Allow me to say something about the state government. Yes, state government is mandated to run the affair of the people, to give good governance, to maintain law and order, security of the people, both external and internal. Yes, but definitely it is not the official representative of the people as far as Naga political movement is concerned. Right. It is the people movement and people will close this issue. Okay, we'll And that is the reason why I say that government of in Yes? Carry on, carry on, complete your point. Yeah. So I should say that uh, the people should take a final call. And people must come together and voice out our concern, our aspiration, without interference, transparent. Right. An independent voice of the people is required at the okay. moment. All right, all right. Uh, and that is missing. That is the gap. Okay, you are saying that independent... And today we are talking about AFSPA. Voice of the people, yeah. We are talking about AFSPA. Yes, I agree with my co-panelists. It is a Dragonian law. It must go. It cannot stay in a democratic system, a democratic uh, uh, country like India. It has to go. It has to be done away. It has to be repealed. But to go for partial lifting, or for that matter, even if it is lifted in the entire state of Nagaland, to me, it is just a farce. It has no meaning. Today, it is open and shut case. You will leave Afspar from Nagaland today. Tomorrow, it will come back as per the demands. So to, to me, lifting 
has no meaning at okay, all. Okay, okay. So, Teza Terry, hold if your thoughts. I'll come back to you. If the political problem Ther is resolved. So, you, you, want okay. to say, you are saying, Teza Terry, you are saying that once the political issue is resolved, these issues will automatically become redundant and irrelevant. That's the yeah, point. Yeah, once the political issue right. is resolved. Yes. This AFPA will have its natural exit. Natural exit. It will not have any relevancy. Absolutely. Once the peace Absolutely. and tranquility Tezateri, prevails, Tezateri, then what is this, this are for special right. power please required? Hold your thoughts. Yeah. Let, me, let me come to you, Professor Javier Mao. Uh, Professor Javier Mao, what is your considered opinion? Do you think that the AFSPA issue, the demand for total lifting of AFSA, do you think that is going to hijack the actual Naga peace negotiations now? Well, I would say the Prime Honourable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for the first time, Increase the volume. several Prime Minister, has you taken a bold alert. step, a bold step in the right direction to create a truly holistic environment for peace dialogue. Therefore, it is uh, very much uh, appropriate and the right step for creating completely congenial and conducive atmosphere. Since from time to time, occasionally, misuse of the... No, no, no. Uh, professor, has professor, occurred, Mao, professor Mao, in Professor Mao, Professor Mao, my question yeah, was yeah. not that. My yeah. question is, do yes, you yes, fear, please. do you fear yeah, yeah. that the APSPA mm. issue may yeah. overshadow do you fear that the APSPA issue may overshadow the Naga peace process? Please give a direct answer. What is your feeling? Well, well, I don't think so. <clears throat> I do not think so. Because uh, in what is fire, in another place there is a hot fire. So this sort of piecemeal consideration is not at all holistic understanding of the situation and it will not create a good atmosphere or a confident building measures. So, so uh, in order uh, to I don't have know, a meaningful... Uh, you don't think... Yeah. You, so the Professor Javier Mao doesn't think that the APSPA issue has the potential to hijack the peace process. Uh, let me Before coming once again uh, to Mr. Chuba Ozukom, we have a, got a very bad connection with uh, Dr. Visya Sanyu. We're, okay, where, where, where is he on the screen? Okay, let, let it be like that. So, uh, Professor, Professor Sanyu, Professor Sanyu, now the focus, profo uh, sorry, Dr. Sanyu, the, the focus is on arriving at an honorable and acceptable solution to the protracted Naga problem. Then the voting incident happened. Unfortunate voting incident of December 4, 2021 happened. 13 civilians lost their lives. After that, the focus, after that, the focus came back on APSPA. Before the voting incident, there were occasional demands. There were occasional demands. It was a routine demand for lifting of APSPA. Now, after the voting incident, the focus was back on, uh, on APSPA. Now, Professor, Mr. Mr. Sumi, what do you think? Do you think that the focus has shifted back to APSPA? And the Naga yes, peace yes, process has hear. taken a yeah, backseat. Do you think? Hello. Do you? Do you? Do you? Okay, Vizier Sanyu is back with us. Doctor Vizier Sanyu is back with us. My question is: Until the voting incident happened, Aspa was not the main issue. The Naga peace. Yeah, process I got a. I got a question. I got a question. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. You see. Um, I mean, uh, the ASPA issue has been going for 60 years, 70 years, and we, we have been fighting to get rid of that. Therefore, the, the, to repeal this one should not hijack the peace talk. The peace talk, it was there before, the peace talk. Statement. It is going to be there after the peace talk. Okay. But the people of are going to fight against this evil. Therefore, the peace talk can go ahead, but we cannot accept this 
real evil, which is a license to kill. And I a little disagree with the previous uh, speaker that when the agreement come, the, 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 the Aspar will go. We can't trust that. We can't believe that. But we've been trying to get rid of this for 60 years. Long before Oting, we have been saying that this will happen. It happened. It'll happen again because it has given the right for the army to shoot and kill. And this is not acceptable. No. It has... Right. O Oting has just brought it out alive. That's all. But it was always there. It will always be there. So I don't think that it will hijack the pistol. The, because we will... We are going to fight against this evil, this evil, whether the peace agreement is going on or not. The point Dr. Sanyu is making is that the APSPA issue is not going to hijack the peace process, but APSPA has to go. There is no two opinion about it. That's what Dr. Vizia Sanyu is saying. Now, Dr. Sanyu, one direct question to you, which is more important, the repeal of APSPA, the total repeal of APSPA, or an negotiated an early solution to the Naga problem? Both are important, but the priority is to repeal ASPA. Because if ASPA is there, as I say, it is harming India more, more than the Nagas. India has enough problem. These people, uh, these villages, innocent people are not going to be a threat to India. And this is, this is civilized. Okay. So, so I feel, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, you ask. No, no. You are, you, are, you are basically saying that the APSPA does not have the potential to hijack the peace talks. And peace talks has to go on the demand for AFSPA repeal also, these are two parallel things. That's what you were saying. These are two simultaneous and parallel things. More or less, yes. But, but it is more important in my mind to repeal AFSPA because the peace agreement cannot work. It won't work okay. if this AFSPA is on. Right. Uh, let, me, let me go to Mr. Sumi, Mr. Kahuto Sumi. Mr. Kahuto Sumi, you have heard, you have heard Dr. Fisia Sanyu. He is saying that yes. you know, he, cannot trust, he cannot trust the fact that APSPA will go even after the peace accord is signed. Uh, he, he is a little bit uh, you know, cynical about that. He does not think it cannot be trusted. He, that's what he said. Dr. Sanyu is saying that it cannot be trusted that APSPA will automatically be relevant and go away once the peace talks is reached. What do you think? My opinion, I have already given in the local papers, mm, that APSPA must be used by the army in a proactive way. Because Naga nationalism is no longer about nationalism, it is about corruption. The a truck, the higher rate of a truck from Dimapur to Meluri, approximately 200 kilometers, uh, give or take. The taxes collected per truck is 35,000 rupees. Those who are talking about the repeal of the Afsfa, uh, these people, they are living in an imaginary world. But Sumi, Mr. Sumi... They don't know what is happening in Nagaland. Yeah, but Mr. Sumi, yeah. it's, a very yes. strong, it's a very strong word. You are saying that Naga nationalism is not about nationalism, it is about corruption. Yes. These are very strong words. I've said, uh, I, I, yes, I'm yes. sure you are saying it with responsibility. Yes, yes. I have written multiple articles which are published in local papers. I have aired my views on local TVs and YouTube shows. This is not something which is new. My last article 
I have written that the government of Nagaland has woven a web of corruption, which includes all the civil so, uh, civil social uh, organizations, so, uh, civil society organizations, and the various factions. There has been no rejoinder. Chuba Uzukum, strong words by uh, Kahoto Sumi saying that Naga national organizations, that they are, that this Naga nationalism is not about nationalism. It has been degenerated into corruption. Very, very strong words used by Kahuto Sumi. Uh, what is your view? <laughs> I think uh, I will disagree to that. Naga nationalism or <clears throat> The Armed Forces Special Power Side, it has got nothing to do with the Naga political problem. Yes, there might be uh, corruption among the national workers and uh, even on the part of uh, state bureaucrats and the politicians. But what about the army officers and the Jawans? Because of NLDB Act in Nagaland, even army chawans are doing business. They are selling liquors to the uh, Naga boys and girls. Question, Mr. It's not a, a corruption, in a way. So, uh, Naga nationalism has got nothing to do with uh, corruption. And in such a <laughs> scenario, political scenario, where there is a movement for self-determination, where there is human rights uh, abuse, a violation, and where there is a guerrilla warfare, I think all uh, unwanted uh, situations will be there. Okay. The uh, only thing is, Mr. Sumi, the political problem has to be resolved. Right. Then only uh, all this will be eliminated. So, Mr. Sumi, you are you are you are reacting to that, Mr. Sumi? Yes, yes. I would like to ask Mr. Osgum a few questions. I uh, just two Please questions. Volume. At the beginning of my, my statement, I said, give me a specific example of when the army has used the AFSA in recent times. They have used it only to cover their mistakes, their blunders. Oting was one, I think the first day Aumachal was another. And coming to the question of corruption, is the uh, is the Mr. Osgum aware of the palaces that our national leaders live in? Is he aware of the property they own? Is he aware of the fact that a few years back the treasurer of the IM, uh, I think I think five or six crores in cash was is from his house. So, are they buying those? Uh, I mean, are they building those houses for the Naga people? Are they buying the property for the Naga people? So please, Mr. Ozukum. Mr. Ozukum, you respond, and then I'll go for a quick break. Mr. Ozukum. Uh, was fear, was fear, uh, yeah, Mr. Kahuto's voice is cracking. I could not hear, uh, you know, anything. Uh, would you please uh, repeat the question to me? No, no, he's saying that, he's saying that he was talking about corruption. He's saying that Naga, some of the Naga national leaders, some of the Naga national leaders have used properties. That's what he is, that is what his uh, claim is. That is what his allegation is. <laughs> that is why I said, everyone is corrupted. It's not only the Naga national workers. Even the army, the national workers, politicians, the bureaucrats were all corrupted. We cannot just pinpoint only to the uh, national workers. That, that, that is what I say. All right, we are at a very interesting stage of this debate. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this very, very short commercial break. Then I'll go to Dr. Vizia Senu, uh, Mr. Teza Terry, and of course, uh, Dr. Javier Mao.
Uh, welcome back. Let me go straight to Mr. Teza Terry. I'm coming to you, uh, Dr. Javier Mao. Mr. Teza Terry, uh, now it has been already so long since we have signed the framework agreement. Everybody thought uh, that, you know, the Naga Accord was going to be signed. Then this issue came up of the flag and the constitution, which the NSC and IM says has always been there. They are saying that it's the core issue. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of a uh, progress, at least we don't know in the public domain, about that issue being resolved. Uh, now, we have seen uh, the NSC and IM leader uh, addressing the UNPO, where also this issue was flagged by the NSC and IM. Now, the issue of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, that has stopped the agenda. Now, where are we heading? Do you think that things have suddenly become much more complicated? Uh, and if Mr. Chuba Ozukum, if I have heard him correctly, uh, he's saying that uh, first the Armed Forces Act should be repealed and only then there has to be, there can be a signature. So do you think uh, this is going to make the Naga peace process more complicated? Uh, Mr. Wasbi, we have to be more realistic. AFSPA is not only about Nagas or Nagaland. It is a Parliament Act. We will continue to oppose till it is repealed. This partial lifting has no meaning at all. But we cannot put this as a precondition for closing the political process. Our priority is our political settlement. And we must remain focused on our priority. Until and unless we settle our issue, as long as there is armed conflict, there will be corruption, there will be intimidation, life and security of the people will be always under threat. And that is why once political solution comes, I think by and large, not only for the Nagas, but in the entire region, there will be peace. And we have to remain focused on that. Enough is enough. 25 years of negotiation, enough is enough. From the beginning of this peace process, government of India definitely has its own aims and objectives. If government of India don't have political will to deliver what it has promised, even after the peace process, the negotiation is officially closed on 31st October 2019. If there is no political will to deliver what it has promised to the people, then the government of India can call off the peace process. It cannot go on indefinitely. At the same time, even the Naga negotiators they have done well, they have represented us, we have given our mandate to them. But if at any point of time, if they have any difficulty, if they cannot carry this forward, or if they cannot close this negotiation, 25 years is a long period of time. Right, right, right. It is a generation. How many generations we have to sacrifice? It's a time for us to take a call. And maybe okay, uh, I'm, uh, they can pull out from this peace go, process. It, this Come back to the people. Right. And revisit. And revisit the mandate. We will collectively decide. We will determine our own future. But it cannot just go on. Peace process is, cannot go on at the cost of the misery of the people. Okay, Dr. Vizia Sanyo, 
peace talks cannot go on indefinitely. Generations of Nagas have suffered. It cannot go on indefinitely. Uh, what, how do you respond to that? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. I agree on one point, but, but I tell you, whatever agreement comes, it is the, the people who, who runs the government will be exactly what the state government is doing because the people are corrupt. There is something rotten in the land of the Nagas. So framework agreement is not going to be a magic to bring peace or development because there will be the same people, the same corrupt people will take this, take, take on the uh, uh, government. Now, one thing about uh, the nationalism which Chuba touched, I want to clarify further. Of course, we must admit that some people, some Nagas, in the name of nationalism are doing extortion, they are gundas, but you must separate Naga nationalism and who are taking the advantage of that name and doing extortion. There's a difference. Naga nationalism is about the love of our people, the right to live as, a, as human, and for self-determination to preserve our nationhood. That's a different issue. But just because a few group has some extortion, you got to be very careful. Have you heard of Nar Nirav Modi? India's biggest bank scandal. In billions, of course. These people are corrupt. Have you heard of Vijay Malaya? Kingfisher Beer, Kingfisher Airline? Where has he gone with billions of dollars? So we are talking about a, a, a corruption of Naga nationalism, but you have forgotten these people. You know, ASPA deeply is a racist act, is a racist law. In Autumn, those people were killed because they were Nagas, not because they were underground. It was absolutely not an, an a mistaken identity. It was very clear, they know it, but the government of India and the army wanted to make it as if it was a mistaken identity. And that hurts and that creates anger. Right. Anger is right. dangerous. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Dr. Vizia Senyo made a very important point. I'm coming to you, Mr. Kahuto Semi. I'm coming to you, Dr. Viz Dr. Javier Mao. Uh, Dr. Vi Dr. Vizia Senyo said, uh, you know, it will be unfair to paint the entire Naga national leaders as corrupt, but there are some people who are trying to take advantage of Naga nationalism and are indulging in corruption and gundaism. So, but you have to make a difference. You have to be able to make a distinction. That is the point. Javier Sanyu has made. Yes, uh, Kahuto Sumi, yes. You, you wanted to make some, you want to say something. Uh, yes, yes. Now he's talking about uh, Mr. Niram Modi, Mr. Vijay Malia. Who, do, who doesn't know about them? Who doesn't admit they're corrupt? But they're businessmen, crooked businessmen. Whereas our underground outfits, aren't they supposed to be fighting for Naga nationalism under the banner of Nagan for Christ? Vijay Malia and Nirav Modi, uh, they are aberrations. 
in the Indian business community. But in the Naga national movement, this is the norm. Corruption is the norm. It is the normal thing. And it is the honest few who are the apparitions. So make that distinction. Now, earlier Mr. Chubhauzukam said corruption in the army. So please let us stick to specifics. I can generalize. I can accuse anybody of anything, but let us stick to specifics. I have accused the government of Nagaland. I accused the civil society organization of Nagaland. I accused the church, the Nagaland Baptist Church Council, and I accused the underground of all being connected in a web of corruption. These are very strong so points. If to these are very, talk. these are yes. very strong points. These are very important organizations. These are points I have made again and again. I have written articles, published in the local papers. I have shared on thing, social media, both audio, I mean video and uh, thing, text. They never respond, but they they have a very good network where they pass things around among each other. They divide and they just ignore the truth. Uh, Dr. Mao? Okay, in, no, so, so please, please may I add something. India is not a banana republic. Any solution that India agrees to must be acceptable to the people of Nagaland, to the people of India, and to the international community. It must be seen as good. Now, all these people talking about another solution, they have not been transparent in even one instance. I'm not talking about the IMLO. The seven NIPG is also. There's no transparency. They have not consulted us. Get out. They want to grab, grab power in Nagaland, to control Nagaland under the protection okay. of the government of India. Okay, Mr. And India is not going to agree to that. Mr. Sumi, uh let, let, let's get an independent reaction. Let's get a reaction from Dr. Javier Mao. Dr. Javier Mao, you have heard uh, both sides. You have heard Ms. Dr. Vizia Senu. You, you have heard strong words, very, very vocal and strong words from Mr. Kahuto uh, Sumi. Now, what do you think as somebody who is observing uh, with not being a part directly of the Naga Civil Society in Nagaland, not being a part of the uh, you know, government or not being a part of the underground movement. You are a professor, you are an academic. How do you see? What do you have to say? Well, I think on the whole, whatever they have observed, I will agree with them. The Naga society as a whole has also become corrupt. Even the so-called political groups have also lost the original idea. It has become highly degenerated, no doubt about it. But that does not mean that the original idea and the original movement started by the Naga people uh, was wrong. No. Though over a period of time, uh, ideas can change, even the ideology can change, because uh, some of the Naga people are convinced that the government, government of India does not treat Nagas as a colony of India. So due to that, a lot of young Nagas are also changing, even in their thinking. Okay. Let and me. some of the Naga civilians are definitely fed up with some of the so-called Naga national workers. They are using threat, intimidation, and they are not at all serving the public not at all serving the people. They are not at all committed. So that part, I will fully agree with their observation. But still, a lot of the Naga people, whether they're working in different fields or not, that Naga sentiment and their feelings are still very much there. Therefore, I think what the Narendra Modi government has responded is something very positive and this is something a welcoming step okay and more should come okay chuba chuba Uzukom, more positive uh, I, I don't have much time come. i don't yeah. have much i don't have much time on this debate chuba Uzukom, please respond chuba Uzukom, please respond okay 
Chuba Ozukom's line is cut. Yeah, I don't know whether Dr. Vijaya Sanyu is with me. So, 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 so basically, basically, uh, Mr. Teza Terry, uh, it, you, are, you, you, are, you are someone who says that Naga peace talks cannot go on indefinitely. Now, do you think the ball is in the court of the government? Do you think? Or the ball is in the court of the Naga national groups? To me, it is in the court of the government of India. Because the official interlocutor have already announced that the peace process is already over. Negotiation is already done. Then if negotiations are done, what are we waiting for? It is for the government of India particularly the Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, must take a call and deliver what it has promised. At the same time, of course, our negotiators, the NPGs, must also be realistic. Right. Okay. They must reflect the ground. Right. They should represent the aspiration of the people. And they cannot take people for a right. Absolutely. Let me take a view. Let me take a view from Chuba Uzukum. Final uh, comments from you, Mr. Chuba Uzukum. Uh, you know, there are very, very strong comments uh, today. But the, 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 there are different points of view on this debate. What do you have to say finally? Uh, was there, uh, before I keep my comment, I want to clarify a certain thing. Uh, forgive me for taking time. In the first place, uh, with regards to uh, Armed Forces Special Powers Act, I've said earlier that uh, I've not, you know, uh, mentioned to give any precondition before the signing of the agreement. I only shared my wishful thinking that the negotiators and the government of India should have discussed seriously about the repeal of Armed Forces Special Powers Act before the signing of ceasefire. That is one thing. Secondly, uh, I would like to raise this uh, to my uh, friend, Mr. Kahuto. If he is supporting AFPA, if his position is not to repeal AFPA from our lane, then the Naga people and the people in the Northeast, those who were killed, you know, hundreds and thousands of them were killed under the shadow of AFSPA. Even recently, there was killings in Oting, there was killings in Arunachal Pradesh. So, Mr. Kahoto, are you ready to, you know, uh, compensate to all these people? To all these victims, those who were killed by the security forces under the shadow of ASPA? That, that is what I want to share. Okay, Kahuto, 20 Lastly, seconds. Lastly, my comments. My comments. Yes, the Kilo entire Naga seven. people they and the North people, the, we are longing the for of Nagaland, political uh, solutions. And they waited for four between hours the Naga for people the and police to turn up. The, the police never turned up. So right. that is but when the villagers came and attacked the them. Of Political solution, we cannot commit another blunder okay. just like that of section point agreement. Right, right, right. I am running absolutely, yes, that, that is the point which uh, Subha Uzukum is making. Now, now, Mr. Sumi, Mano, Mr. Sumi, you comment. Your 20 seconds yes, to you. Final yes, comments, yes. 20 seconds. So, I am asking Mr. Uzukum, I am willing to sacrifice my life or the life of a few innocent Nagas so that hundreds of thousands of Nagas may be free from the daily extortions. We pay more for salt, for uh, chilies, for meat, for everything. Before we can start constructing a house, before we can buy a brick, we have to pay 25,000 to hire the truck. So I'm willing to sacrifice a few lives if these parasites can be removed uh, by using the AFSA in a proactive way. What I'm saying is that okay. the army knows very well okay, uh, okay, okay. who are the people. But they are not arresting them. Okay, very, and very. And they're just using this officer when they make mistakes. 
Okay, very. I am running. I am running totally short of time. I am running totally short of time. This is a, has been a very explosive debate, I would say. Uh, but at the end of it, uh, lo people do not believe that the UPSPA issue is going to hijack the peace process. These as issues which are have their own relevance. Uh, I think we'll have to wait and watch as things pans out. And as as uh, as Mr. Teja Terry has said, the ball is in the court of the government of India to come and take a call. He has appealed to the prime minister to intervene. And everybody, the whole of Nagaland is waiting for a resolution of this, uh, of this issue. But in any negotiation, there has to be give and take. And to what extent which side is going to go is the big question at this point in time. I thank all my panelists for participating in the show and the viewers for watching the program. Good night and goodbye.